Hello and welcome to our webinar of the month. Today we're going to be talking about Facebook ads 101 for design and remodeling companies. So let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the importance of Facebook ads, top trends and tips on Facebook ads and Facebook boost versus ads manager. Okay. Now there are 2.91 billion active Facebook users. That's a lot. And paid advertising on social media is an immediate way to impact the reach of your content. And Facebook ads next to Google ads is the top platform for uh, media buyers and advertising. So Google AdWords is number one. Facebook ads and Instagram ads is right behind it. So Facebook ads is something that if you have a uh, design and remodeling business that if you're not utilizing, you are missing potential leads, okay? And understanding how to use Facebook uh, ads is a must because it's important in terms of getting to your right direct client audience. Understanding how to use Facebook ads is a must because it's important to get to your ideal client. The importance of Facebook ads. So first of all, you have accurate targeting. So when you do Facebook ads, you get to get detailed into the differentiators between your audience and what their lifestyle are, their interests. You can get really into who they are and what they are and target the potential end user and the ideal client. Because like we like to say in the market world, if you market to everyone, you're actually marketing to no one. So you want to ensure that you are targeting the right people and Facebook allows you to do that. A lot of other platforms that are that do ads actually uh, derive their ad platform off of what Facebook does because they are so accurate in their targeting. The return on advertising spend or ROAS, like we like to say. So in a 2020 survey of retailers, it showed that 41% said they had the greatest return on advertising spend from Facebook ads. And that's huge compared to the average conversion rate across all industries at just 9.21%. So advertising on Facebook is a great way for you to reach your ROI. And if you are, if you know what you're doing and you're doing it the right way, you can really get a return on investment or ROIS return on ad spend. Okay. Audience potential. Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world. So reaching that audience is vital because like we just like I just talked about 2.91 billion users. So to reach that many people is 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 imperative. So no matter what industry you're in, but we're talking mainly today about design and remodeling. But your customer, your client, your end user. Who you want, your potential prospect is on Facebook. So if you know how to do advertising the right way, you can reach them where they are. Real-time analytics, Facebook ads has an algorithm that helps you in the ad platform. So after about two to three days of running the ads, it actually optimizes the ads uh, on your behalf. And it helps you in terms of what ads are working right, which ones are not if you're doing A-B testing. So make sure to use the analytics in Facebook because it offers a lot of information to help you uh, not waste money, but use your ads the right way to reach your target audience and get the ROI, the ROAS, the ROAS, or the ROI, the return on investment that you need, okay? And cross-platform integration here, Facebook and Instagram. A lot of the times they the ad platforms are the same. So you could cross promote on both platforms at the same time. And we'll talk a little more about that at the end. OK. So we're going to start with the number one top trend, and that's the campaign objective before. And this is where I always start. If, if you watched any of our webinars or trainings, we always start with knowing your audience and knowing your why. OK. So you want to know your objective. Why are you doing the ad in the first place? What's the objective? What's the point? So there are different options you have here. You have awareness, consideration, and conversion. And under each of these, you have 
different avenues. So under awareness, you have brand awareness of reach. Under consideration, you have traffic, engagement, app installs, video views, lead generation, and messages. Under conversion, you have conversions, catalog series, and store traffic. Now, we'll get into each of these right now. So with the awareness objective, it's designed to show your ad to the largest number of people in your target audience within your budget constraints. So we're going to talk about the budget constraints uh, over a few side in a few slides from now. But in the awareness, you really want to get your name, your brand name out there. And there's a couple options like we talked about brand awareness and reach where brand awareness objective is for optimizing impressions, views on the brand, okay? And then we have here on when you can use it. This is a good option if you wanna build a memorable brand that have means to a measure and a recall, okay? And then there's some other things there. And then on the read side, this, is, this also optimizes impressions, but it will show as to as many people as possible in the target audience within a bunch of constraints. Whereas the main use for this is if you're organizing a local event or if you're trying to get as many people as possible to a certain event. OK, however, if people need to book tickets in advance, this would, wouldn't be the best suit for this objective. And we're going to talk about that if, if you have that as an objective for an event. There's another option you have out there for that. But just on the awareness side, getting your brand name out there, making sure your company is in front of as many people as possible, using either the brand awareness or the reach aspect, is which is one of the two that you want to do, one of the ad types or ad objectives that you want to do. Okay. The next objective is the consideration. And so that's optimizing for a specific action such as link clicks or comments. Facebook will show your ad to as many people within your target audience and will likely that will likely take action. OK, so you have some options here. You have traffic, engagement and app install. So for traffic, the primary goal is to drive traffic to a website. That's self-explanatory. You're just trying to use this ad objective to drive as many people in your target audience to your website or to a page on your website. And there are when to use this is it's a good option if you want to if you want to send people to your website or read your blog. OK, that's a good use case. OK. For the engagement option, this is for page likes and shares. OK, so this is if you have a post and you really want to increase the number of likes on it, the, the comments, the shares the reactions from the people in your audience that are viewing that post, whether that's a video post, static post, whatever it is, you're trying to increase the engagement on that post. And that's obvious. The when you want to use that is if when you want to increase the engagement on that particular post. And then the app installs, obviously, you're trying to get more people to install your particular app. So you want to use this if you have an app to begin with, or if you have something in your business, whether it's an app on your phone or an app on the computer that you want to drive people to, to download more of those apps. And there are different ways that they do that within the platform. Okay. So this is just some of the options here where you have uh, the app installs and the engagement and then how it looks on the screen. So remember when you're watching this, this is actually uh, August. 2022. So if you're watching this beyond this or a few months later and the screen has changed, remember Facebook often updates their algorithm. They often updates their, their layout. So the layout that you're looking at now may not be the exact same that you're looking at if you're watching this in the future and everything is not in the same place that it is right here. But in terms of the objectives, the objectives will still be there. It's just that the layout may be a little different depending on when you're watching this replay. You're looking at also looking at video views, lead generation and messages. So we had talked about the app clicks and on, on the other slide, but this is just a continuation of the consideration objective. So on the video views, obviously, you want to get more people to look 
and click and watch your video. So this is this ad type is aimed to get as many people in your target audience to view the video for as long as possible. OK, and you want to get people to watch that introductory video and get as many views as you can, whether it be a Facebook Live replay, whether it be a Facebook ad with a video attached to it, whatever that may be in the video side, this ad type is aimed to get as many video views for as long as you can. With the lead generation side, what you're at, at this type of ad, you're looking to get individuals or your end user to contact or leave their information on the contact form. So Facebook actually hands you a lead form where uh, you can fill out the information for the ad and then it goes out to your target audience to get people to input their information on that ad. OK, this is a great objective for if you're trying to get prospective customers to be able to easily submit their contact details. But and you can also have this on your website. But if you don't have one on your website, you can use their lead form. OK, so you can use the lead generation either with their lead form or if you have a contact form on your website that they can use. All right. And if you have a contact form on your website that's not optimized, you may want to err on the side of using Facebook's lead form, which is always up to date. OK. And then messages is the last one. And that's where the primary objective here is to start conversations with people in messenger. All right. So there's a lot of automatic replies in messages that you'll see now. I'm sure you've seen that. A lot of times when you see an ad or when you're on a Facebook page and you send a message that says, uh, what time are you open? How much does this cost? What is your service about? There's usually an automatic message that pops up. So this one is aimed at getting your end user to actually engage with you and have a conversation with you through Messenger about your service or product. So this is used when the opportunity, when you really want to chat to people and talk to them and answer any of the questions that they have about your product or service so they can make an informed decision to make a purchase. So this is aimed at answering any of the typically asked questions where you may not have an automatic reply, but you really need to talk to the person or talk to the end user or the potential client about your product or service so they can really make an uh, informed purchasing decision, okay? So that's what that is used for, all right? And then this is just an example of how, how this is and, and the form. Like I said, if you're watching this in the future on the replay, the layout may not look the exact same because they're always changing their layout, but the information will be relevant. But just make sure as you're you should be watching this either on the side as you're heading through each of the forms so you can follow along, okay? So the last objective is conversion. So if you're really looking for conversions, what you want to, your, your main objective is to encourage individuals to that are interested in what you have to sell, whether it's a product or service, but you want to convert them. And this is all about the cost per conversion. And so you want to drive that dollar amount down as far as possible so you can up your ROI. All right. So there are three different um, steps or, or, or types here where you have the catalog sales, you have the conversions and you have the, and you have the store traffic. So starting with the catalog sales, this is product based. So this is looking at uh, creating a catalog on Facebook where it has all the different types. And this is for if you have a large number of products. So if you are a designer and you have a showroom or you have certain elements within a room or you have or if, say, for instance, you're doing a kitchen remodel and on the cabinet, you have a lot of the accessories. You may want to list all of the accessories on the catalog on this type of ad type where it shows a large number of products to the potential customer and it leads them based on their previous interactions 
to be more likely to do business with you. So that's looking at, like I said, if you have a showroom or if you do not have a showroom and you're a designer that just has a number of services and a lot of those services can be cataloged. So you can have that option for your end user or your potential client. Conversions is is where you want to have, where you want to reach the your target client, where the end goal is for them to take a, a specific action on your website. Okay. That can include anything from newsletters. If they if you want them to sign up for a newsletter, make a purchase, install uh, a certain app. So you can use this one can be interchangeable with the with the app as well if if you have an app. But this is mainly aimed at your website where the app one more so if you have an app on your phone or anything like that. So for the conversions, you want to ensure that you're trying to have them take an action on your website. And this is optimized to help you do that. And so this is best used for when you want to send people to your website with the intent of making a purchasing decision or submitting their contact details to become a lead. All right. And then the last one is store traffic. So this one, if you have a brick and mortar store. So for the designers that are listening either now or on replay that have a shower, this is the ad type that you want to have them take. So you're trying to drive, drive more foot traffic into the store and have them make a purchasing decision or talk with you or engage with you while they're in the store. So this ad type is actually optimized for driving traffic to a brick and mortar shop. So for the designers listening, this is for you if you have a showroom. OK, showroom type. This is where this is, is the one you want to use to drive traffic to your store. All right. So the next trend is is finding your target audience. So Facebook has an insights tool and that is a great tool to help you understand your audience and it it takes you into their likes, dislikes, their interests, demographic information, where they are, all of that and all of that. So you want to use this information to create a customer profile and in depth so you can learn how to better tailor your ad, the content in it, so it resonates with the end user. One of the things I always talk about is understanding your ideal client. Because when you understand who they are, and when you have a client persona, then you could create content that will resonate with them. Because if you're trying to market to everyone, you're actually marketing to no one. So when you understand your target audience and who your client is, now you can create content that will resonate with them that is interested, that that interests them, that they can say, okay, this is actually written for me. I want to know more. And then they can take action from there. Okay. And this is the audience insights tool here. It shows a lot of information. This, this, this tool, you can spend uh, hours on this tool, honestly. So you can delve deep into your audience to determine who your target audience is. And you can type in your location, uh, your interests what the professions are, and it, it tells you about how many people will be in that, in that, in that audience type. So you want to try to get as many people within your target audience to reach as possible. Okay. Targeting layers. Now there are a lot of different layers that happen within target. And you must understand that when you are setting up target audiences, it is important to understand the differences between and and or target logic. Knowing the difference can help you in terms of targeting 15,000 to 15 million. And if you're in a large population like Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Miami, if you're in any Houston, any of those areas, you do not want to target the whole city. Because not all of them are your ideal target audience. So you may be in Los Angeles where you have four or five million people, but your target audience may only be 500,000 or realistically, hopefully may only be 5,000 or whatever that number is. But you do not want to target five million because you're going to waste a lot of money reaching out to 
the people that are not interested in your offering or not interested in your service. OK, so by understand target layering, it helps you narrow down your audience to better understand who your target audience is and uh, shrink the number of people that are seeing your ad to only the people that are really interested in what you have to offer. And a tip we have here is adding in options. Adding in the first option will decrease the size of your audience. So for instance, if the interest, if you're a designer and you focus either in on aging in place or you focus, or you focus on sustainability, if you type in interest and ability or you type in aging in place or, or something along those lines, you may have an audience that was at 5 million that just by adding in that interest went down to about 200,000. So now you're not targeting people that are not interested in aging in place. You're not targeting people that are not interested in sustainability. So now you're reaching out to only the people that will be interested in what you have to offer. Okay. And we have here a case study and then a scenario. And you can look over this. What it is, is just about how you can delve down into the different interests of your end user or your potential client to shrink the amount of people that the ad will go out to. Because remember, you're paying every time somebody clicks on that ad. So you do not want to pay for a click when you have somebody that's not interested in what you have to say or what you have to offer. OK, so that's why you want to really target down and drill down on the interest and the targeting so you can minimize the number of uninterested people seeing your ad and only have it for the eyes that will really take action on your ad. OK, next we have geo targeting. Geo targeting is about narrowing the area where you want to target the people. So, for instance, if if you are a designer in Chicago, you may not want to have your audience show to all people in Chicago. You may be in Highland Park and you may only want to highlight the people in Highland Park. You may be in the Dallas area. And you may not want to have all of the DFW area look at your ad. You may only want to have people in Plano or in Mesquite look at your ad. And so that also ties into where is your service area. So if you have, because we actually have a client that is right near Philadelphia, but he does not want to have anybody in the Philadelphia area because that is out of his jurisdiction and where he wants to work. So he's in another area just about 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia proper, but he wants to target his area, his neighborhood. So you can shrink and geo target only the people that are in that area. And you want to do that because if you do not do that well enough, you will get ad clicks from people outside of your area. You may even get people from outside the city and outside the state. And remember, you're paying for every time somebody clicks on the ad. So you want to make sure that you geo-targeted the right people in your specific area that you want to service and that are interested in what you have to offer. OK. And we have a case study here where we had looked at designer in the area and then what what happened there. OK. So geo-targeting, it, it may seem simple enough. But it can either be by area, zip code, city name, but you do want to make sure to have some information in there. Because if you just have the city proper, Los Angeles, Chicago, and if you're in a major metropolitan city, you will waste a lot of money. So you want to be specific on the city, the zip codes that you want to target so you are not paying for clicks outside of those areas. All right. Budgeting. This is one of the things that that can have you waste money or say at the end of the month, say why. OK, so when you set a budget, it's important to remember that this figure represents the maximum amount of money that you want to spend either per day, per week or per month. OK, so you want to make you want to ensure that you set that at the start. And you want to monitor this as much as possible. 
So the campaign budgeting optimization is, is at the ad level. And that's where it, it divvies up the budget based on what your maximum amount is. So you can say, I want to spend 1000 a month. So it'll divide that up and say, okay, this is how much you want to spend a day, okay? Or if you say, I want to only spend $5 a day, I want to spend $10 a day. So that'll be 70 a week, and then that'll be roughly about 300, depending on how many days are in the week, up to, it could be in between 280 to uh, 310 a month, depending on how many days are in, in the month. But you want to ensure that you have that maximum set so you do not go over your budget. Because if you do not set this properly, you could come to the end of the month and have spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars that you did not want to spend. And we've seen this happen. We've we've had clients where they thought they set the monthly at 100 and it was actually at 100 a day. And at the end, they had, you could do the calculation, how much extra day they had to spend on. So the easiest way is to set a daily maximum. Say, I want to spend $15 a day. I want to spend $20 a day. And then you can monitor it more frequently and know that you will not go beyond that budget and have a aha or a oops moment at the end of the month. Because needless to say, that client that spent a few thousand when they was only looking to spend a, a few hundred was not happy with that bill. Now the Facebook ad format, there, there are some options here with the format. So you have the photo ads, and then we have here what are the spec, aspect ratios for that. And even though photo ads, they, they still work. Video by far is where you want to go. And so that's the next level. Video ads is you can either do single use or uh, where you uh, promote a product or service, or you, you can do a, a video in terms of before and after where you do a slideshow of a lot of the properties you've worked on to whatever it is. But video, honestly, is what you want to do more of than the photo ads. The photo ads still work, still work, but we by far see a better ROI on video ads. And you do not always have to be in the video. Like I said, you can do a slideshow, you can do a voiceover where you're showing something, but you're explaining the process. So that's one. Another one is the carousel ads. This one, if you just want to do photos, I would suggest do a carousel ad over just a static one image photo because this showcases numbers of images. And so this helps because it explains more about the product or service that you're trying to promote. It gets the end user more interested and better to understand what you're trying to uh, showcase and promote to them. And they're more apt to be interested than just one static image. But by far, video is the best. But next after that, I would say I would say the carousel ads. And then you also have the collection ads. This is a mobile only and it allows the users to discover and shop for products again this is for like if you have a, a showroom and you have you have a lot of products that you're trying to promote and then you have the aspect ratios for each of these ad types here okay <clears throat> other formats in your ads so you have the story ads which are are the pop-ups you have the playable ads which these ads allow potential users to try an app before they buy it you have the slideshow ads. This is where you have several images, like that, like I said, with the carousel. So, like I said, if, if you're going to do just a static image, I, I would say veer, veer away from just the one image. Do multiple images, either a, a slideshow or carousel, so you can show multiple images to your end user. And then you have uh, the messenger ads, which we had talked about earlier on with the messenger apps. Okay. So, ad placements. This is actually where the ad will show on the phone or on the computer, okay? So the ad placement, so you have different variations here. You have the news feed, you have the Instagram feed, you have the Facebook marketplace, video feed, you have the right column, Instagram explore, and the messenger inbox. So these are just the different options 
that you have for the placement of where the ad will go. So you'll get a lot of these options, but did just at a visual standpoint, I just wanted you to see where the ad will be shown on the mobile device. Because like I said, 85% of the users start the search. It's actually over 85%. It's almost 90, if not higher than that. But most of the search will start on a mobile device. So you need to think about which of the ad placements will best benefit your end user and have them more apt to take action on your ad. Okay. And then the frequency. So this is the average number of impressions a user will be given into your audience as how many times they're going to see your ad. So this is the frequency that they're going to see your ad before it stop, sh stop being shown to them. OK, so you'll usually have like a date range and then how often you want to have them view it. So you can say, I want to have that same person view that ad eight times within a uh, two week time span. And you have to uh, remember in marketing, it takes multiple touch points for anybody to take action on on an ad so just just because they saw it one time nine times out of ten that's not going to be enough they're going to need to see it multiple times so in in here with the frequency you're going to determine how often they see that over a uh, designated time span so over a week how often will they see it will they see it two to three times seven to eight times now you do not want to go overboard 10 15 20 times in 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 a short amount of time span because now they can start to click off or not. And, and then, you know, that that because you can then annoy the end user. But you want to make it frequent enough that they see it and then they start to get in their mind. So when they're thinking about the product or service, you are the one that they think about. So look at the frequency. We have a rule of thumb here that it should be half the number of A's you have selected in the deck range. So if you have seven A selected, the frequency should be not more than three and a half of those A's in any given audience. So, for instance, if you have if you have the ad running for 10 days, best rule of thumb is to show the frequency about five times. OK, over that 10 day span. So that roughly looks at um, what the frequency should be. That's a rule of thumb, like I said, in your area with your audience, it may change. So uh, also A-B test a lot of these ads, do different split testing to see because one ad type may not work for your audience, but another ad type may that you need to think about. So testing and A-B testing is very important. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. I want to be high level in terms of Facebook ads, because like I said, this is Facebook ads one on one just to start. Now, we're going to do a deeper eye into how to really have an impact with your Facebook ads. But this is just a Facebook ad one on one just to get you started. Dip your toe in the pool so you can understand what are the do's and don'ts, how the ad placements and how the ads should be set up, different type of ads and all. So you can have the understanding from the high level. On a future webinar, we're going to get into the weeds and really have you understand how to maximize your ROI. But if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. We're happy to help. We are a digital marketing agency that specializes in helping interior designers and home remodelers. So this is all we do. We do Facebook ads, Google ads, and we help our design clients maximize their ROI on the spend to reach their target audience. So. We do this every day. So that's just one of the services we do. You can see here we have others in terms of SEO searches and optimization, social media management, reputation management, video, public relations, web design, and on and on and on. But whatever your marketing needs, we are here to help. We hope you will reach out to us if you have any questions at all. Like I said, just feel free to email me or email somebody on our team and we'll be happy to help you. Or Give us a call for next month. We're going to look at on September the 28th, Wednesday, September 28th. We're going to look at why your website needs to be accessible. And we're going to be joined by Ari from Accessibility as one of our new partners. 
that we are partnering with to make our clients' websites accessible and why you should look into making sure your website is accessible for anybody, hearing impaired, visually impaired, any of the disabilities out there. You want to make sure that your website is accessible. So we're going to talk about that next month, September 28th, and we hope to see you all next month on our webinar of the month. Have a good day.